In this video, we're going to look at bringing in a PDF file into Carlson Takeoff and getting cut fill quantities from it. I have a PDF file right here called Wind Turbine Site. And if I look at this PDF, this is a vectorized PDF. You can tell as I zoom in, the line work stays clean. So we're going to bring in this PDF. This PDF, meaning it's vectorized, is a PDF that's been created directly out of a software opposed to a paper plan um, that's been scanned in into a PDF file um, that's a raster PDF. Right here I'm going to go over to Carlson Takeoff and I'm going to say file import export import PDF file. I'm going to select that file and say open. Okay, I have two options here. Uh, one is to insert it as line work or as an image. Inserting a line work is going to convert this PDF file into CAD polylines for us. So I'm going to check on that option. Okay, so I can scan how many pages. Um, this PDF is just one sheet, so I'm going to bring in everything, but I could select a certain page range if I wanted to. I'm going to say OK. And the program is running Ghost Script right now in the background to bring in that PDF. Uh, Ghost Script is a, a separate program um, that you can install to bring in PDF files. Uh, there's a link on our website under the knowledge base if you look for PDF import it will give you directions on how to install ghost script okay it has processed that PDF file it converts it into um, a DXF of CAD polylines now it's asking me for the insertion point to bring in the PDF I'm just going to click a point on the screen here. Uh, I'm not sure the rotation angle or the scale at this time. So I'm just going to hit enter for the defaults for those. And I've successfully brought in that PDF file um, as line work. So if I click over here, um, this is uh, the PDF in Adobe. And then in Carlson, that PDF, if I click on it, I get actual line work. So you can see that these contour lines are nice and clean. If it crosses over other lines, it still knows which line is which for that line work. Um, and then I have little dashed lines for all these uh, elevated, uh, or these contour lines here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this job. So I'm going to say edit, rotate, standard rotate. I'm going to select the objects and hit enter. Specify a base point and then I'm going to rotate it at negative 90 degrees. I could have done negative 90 degrees or 270, a positive 270, and that flips it. Um, so I'm looking at it in this direction. Okay. Uh, my next get step is to scale the drawing correctly. So I have a bar scale here. If I look at the distance there, so right here we have an icon bearing in distance. If I go from 0 to 40, I can see that horizontal distance right now is only 2 feet. If I were to check, uh, you know, the distance across the road, that's, on, that's also, that's under 2 feet across that road. So I'm definitely going to need to scale this drawing, and I can do that with the command under Edit, Scale, and our scale wizard. 
with our scale wizard um, here is where I can use a customized scale factor and I'm going to have a screen pick and I'm going to zoom in here I'm going to say right here is 0 to 40 okay so you can see that's almost exactly 2 feet I want that distance to be 40 feet you notice it calculates a scale factor for us to 10 decimal places and I'm going to scale the entire drawing by the scale factor so I'm going to say OK and zoom extents by double clicking the mouse and I can go back over here and check this distance to 40 okay you see it's at 37.9796 and the distance across my road right here that's 35 feet Okay, that makes more sense than less than two feet. All right, so now we've scaled the drawing correctly and uh, we rotated it, so we're looking at it uh, straight on. Uh, our next step is that we've gotten line work for these on different layers. Um, and we're basically gonna go through and do takeoff steps of creating line work that defines our existing and design. So you can see, based off of the colors that are in the drawing, the program writes those out to different layers. If I look at my drawing inspector here, okay, I can see this line is on a different layer than this line. And that's just based off of any color or grayscale in the drawing. So let's look at just these existing contours. If I look at just this, these two layers, the major and minor, are two different colors, um, and I were to look at this in 3D, I'm going to uncheck ignore zero elevations. And looking at this in 3D, I can see everything's at zero elevation. This site is completely flat. Okay, so working off a of PDF, elevations don't come through from the PDF. So I'm going to have to elevate this line work. The problem right now is that each little dash is its own line. So if I wanted to change the elevations, I would have to change the elevation on each dash line. Um, the way we're going to avoid having to do that is to join this up to make it one consistent line. And to join up all these layers, I'm going to uh, little dash lines, I'm going to run join nearest max separation to join, I'm going to say pick. I want it to jump across the gaps here. Okay, so you can see the gap is almost three feet between those. And I'm going to have it draw, uh, connect up all these lines. So I'm going to say OK. I'm zooming out and I'm going to select all these contours. Press enter. And it's going to join these contours. Okay, now it said it's joined 7,000 entities. So that should be, if I zoom in here, all these little dashed lines, now these are all one consistent line. 
So when I elevate, I, I only have to elevate one contour line at a time, not each dashed line. Okay, to elevate these, if I zoom in here, um, I can see this is at elevation 1640, and this is 1650. So I have two foot intervals going along here. I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to say elevate, assign contour elevations multiple and series. Okay, and I'm going to call these... Um, existing contours. So I'm going to put these on a layer called existing contours. And I'm going to make them all green. Okay. So this is uh, the width. I'm going to make the major contours a little thicker than the minor contours. So I'm going to say OK. Uh, pick first point. So I'm going to pick a point to the right here. And these are all going up slope. So I can go all the way across. And that first elevation, 1640, going up in elevation. Okay, if I go over these now, this line work is elevated. So this first line, 1640. If I check this one, it should be 1680, 1682, 4, and I can see I've elevated all the way across these contours. All right, um, the green ones are elevated. It only elevated line work that I cross, so I can still see these aren't, aren't elevated here. This one's at 1642. Okay, this is outside my work area, but I can still elevate it if I say multiple in series. And I'm going to go pick through these. Okay. And that first one was 1642. So I already elevated this, but I'm just going to re-elevate it. 1642. I'm going down slope. And now I have elevations on this line work. Okay. I could do the same thing for these, but they're, they're really outside of our job. If I look at these in 3D now, I have elevated contours. They look pretty flat. But if I change the vertical scale on these, I have elevated existing contours. Okay. I've created this layer, and now I just need to tell the program that this is an existing element. And I've created um, existing contours now. Okay. So we can look at the rest of the line work that we have here. And we'd want to use the same elevate routines to elevate the design contours. And then we'd be able to create surfaces from the design we have the existing ORI elevated, and that would give us quantities from a PDF file.